Joel, Major Tom, Henry O'Donovan, can you hear us? Hello, good morning, John, and, uh, and good morning, good Southampton. Good morning, and good evening to Australia. It's funny, you know, we got cut off there, and it just uh, serves us right to know that technology is not perfect. Not yet, no. Our, we, we weren't run one of the cheaper satellite systems here. <laughs> <laughs> It's an old Astra box. But uh, anyway, it, uh, it's working well. And, uh, well, I think we should say sort of Happy New Year and all that because it's, it was just before Christmas. I think That's it's right, like- yes. And uh, what's been going on? Of course, uh, you've had your Australia Day down there and uh, various other things. You've even been on Walk About Yourself. Yes, uh, I went to Tasmania, which is a little island just south of Australia. Some people like to think it's another country, uh, which is rather rude of them. Um, It is very different. Uh, The drivers are much more polite on the road. Uh, The weather, it can feel like winter in the middle of summer, and certainly did. We were in minus three degrees uh, on the side of a mountain without water or electricity or internet. Oh, that's tropical. It was fun, though, you know, it just felt like, you know, uh, just leaving the world, you know. I was in minus 20 last week. Yes, you mentioned that. You were in Poland? Yeah, uh, went off to Poland, uh, went over to meet the uh, girlfriend's parents and uh, had a sort of 10 days break, which ended up being like working on a farm. Uh, <laughs> two days uh, felling trees, um, which uh, it, was, it was quite an experience. In, uh, minus tw- in minus 20 degrees, you were felling trees? That's right. In fact, we were very close to a river, one of the big rivers that runs all the way through um, Warsaw out to Russia. And one of the trees actually came down on the river and didn't even make a crack in the ice. It was frozen over completely. Oh, God. Why well, do you call this a holiday? Well, it, uh, we, did, <laughs> we got a romantic couple of days out of it, which was so uh, nice. Which was, oh, that's which good. Was good. Yeah, but uh, a great time uh, had by all. Uh, really enjoyed it. But, um, of course, if anyone goes down there, and uh, you mentioned the driving just now, if you are a Brit abroad and going to Australia or, or Tasmania, the, you, can, you drive on the same side, don't you? So it's, yes, uh, it's one of the good things. I mean, I'll tell you a very quick story. When I was um, in Corfu many, many years ago, uh, I, I hired a car, and, of course, they drive on the right-hand side of the road, not the left-hand side of the road. And uh, I thought I was really great working out the gear sticks everything worked fine until i got around to a roundabout and i went <laughs> around the roundabout the wrong way and i'm in a higher car so you can imagine the amount of abuse i got <laughs> it's, it's kind of funny i had it all worked out you know on the right the, the, the left sorry the right hand side of the road it never yeah. occurred to me have to go around the roundabout the other way as well <laughs> we we drove uh, an English car over in Europe uh, once, and uh, the Europeans, they're very interested in getting past anything as quickly as possible, and they have their own rules of the road. But uh, when you're driving, you're, on, you're on, sitting on the right-hand side, but driving uh, also on the right, mm. you want to take anything, and uh, relying on your passenger to tell you that there's nothing coming. And yeah, that's <laughs> tricky stuff, you know, that's the worst part of, of driving a left-hand drive in, in, like in Australia, exactly okay. what you're saying, is that you can't actually overtake a truck, because, and if you're driving by yourself, it's just a no-no, you know. And all I was getting was, oh, we can do that, no! <laughs> <laughs> oh, the amount of times I was saying prayers, many, many yes, times. Yes, yes, I, I think you're very brave to have even attempted that, actually. Mm. Oh, scary. Scary moment. Anyway, I, I used the aeroplane this time. It was a lot better, quicker, two and, hours. And, and probably safer. Yes, certainly <laughs> was. I don't care which side the pilot flies. <laughs> we got there. <laughs> yeah. um, you've, you've had lots of uh, various different things going on in Australia. Australia Day recently. Uh, big yeah. celebrations. Uh, get involved with that? Uh, yeah, it's kind of funny. I think I'm the only sober person in the country on Australia Day. Uh, everyone gets drunk at like 10 in the morning, and um, by the time the evening comes, they're really absolutely finished. And a lot. it's actually not a nice day to go out. It's great to celebrate being an Australian, which I technically am because I, have, I hold the passport. Uh, but in fact, it, it's it's a massive booze up for people, and I I don't particularly. It's not that I'm old and boring, although I probably am both of those things. Uh, it's just that I I'm not interested in waiting uh, half an hour to buy a drink at a pub, and um, being surrounded by crazy people. Um, uh, and I I tend not. What I do is I go to the beach. I mean that's the best thing to do on Australia Day. But the other thing I should say to you, John, is that. At the moment in Australia, there's a major crisis going on with the ruling Labour Party. Uh, 
under uh, Julia Gillard as our Prime Minister and um, Kevin Rudd was ousted from the Labour Party 12, 13, 14 months ago and um, now he's challenging her. So we've got a major coup going on in the ruling Labour Party in Australia and that will be decided on Monday. I've been seeing it. And she's a Brit as well, isn't she, by birth? She's actually from Wales. So it depends on whether Welsh people think well, she's a Brit. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's just a... It's, 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 she, she, could, she could have been Irish if she could swim. Yeah, it, it's kind of funny. Yeah, she actually came over from Wales, I think, when she was six years old. And she's got the broadest Australian accent. I mean, really. <laughs> she's... So really, there's chance, because you've got a passport now, you could, you could become Prime Minister one day. Yes, I could. Um, not that I ever would. Um, I'm far too out there to, uh, if you listen to our chat show, you'll know that I'm way too out there. I would never be voted in, in this country, or any country for that matter. Now, talking of which, you mentioned chat show. Uh, we've got a brand new show coming to us here at Voice FM, Sunday, 10 o'clock in the morning through until midday, uh, hosted by yourself and a cast of uh, many other correspondents. That's right, yeah, and, and thank you so much for doing this. Um, Bondi Tunes Music and Chat is part of the Bondi Tunes Network, as well as, of course, the 70s show, which gets uh, aired as well. Uh, we have 15 correspondents around the world. We've got uh, three or four in America, four in Australia, uh, one in Ireland, and we're now about to have a correspondent in um, the continent of Africa, actually, Ghana. Uh, and the whole purpose of this um, is to actually have a global radio show. And we talk, I talk to our correspondents about uh, social, cultural, political issues. And also my correspondents interview singers and uh, it does, uh, everything goes with this show. And um, we do this every week. It's music chat and uh, I've heard it before. It is really good. And uh, you've got a show all lined up for this Sunday. Any, any snippets of what we might expect this? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know what? There's a really interesting story that we're running. Um, I interviewed Tina Gates, who is a broadcaster in, on 98FM in Dublin and Ireland, an ex-colleague of mine from about 30 years ago. We were both newsreaders on the same station. Tina Gates law, uh, was 23 stone in weight two years ago. Mm -hmm. She dropped her weight by over half, so she's only half her weight. She climbed to the base of Mount Everest and wrote a book all in two years, and she's been hounded by the, the TV and radio media in Ireland for the last week while her book has been released. And luckily, we at uh, the Bondi Tunes Network got to speak to her because uh, it was only because I'm, I'm an ex-colleague of hers that I got to speak to her. And it's a fascinating interview, and, and it's very, very positive. It's about how people can change their lives if they really want to. Excellent. You'll be able to hear that on uh, Sunday morning, 10 o'clock here at Voice FM. And... Uh, in fact, you mentioned that in the news yesterday here, they were saying that uh, obesity is becoming really bad in this country. They were saying the average weight of a man 10 years ago was 10 stone. Now he's 13. Uh, wow. a woman is, her average weight now is getting up to around 11 stone. Another year or two, she could be 13 stone. And they were saying by another 5 to 10 years, the average weight of a man could be around 18 stone. Scary. What's going on? I mean, you know, it, it, here's an interesting fact that I, I told Tina Gates, the person I'm in, interviewing who lost half her body weight in two years. Um, the fact is that Australia now per capita is, has the most obesity in the world. They've, they've beaten America. Mm. Here in Australia, I mean, the image of Australia is, you know, sexy people walking on beaches. But the, That's the, right. The, the horrid truth is that we are the most obese nation in the world per capita. And, uh, you know, obviously the UK is having its problems too. Well, we do, you know, you only have to look out the window here. It's all fast food all around. Yeah. Um, one girl that was interviewed yesterday, uh, quickly get through this, is, was saying that, uh, you know, she can spend three pounds on a salad or she can spend three pounds on three beef burgers. And she said, you know, um, what's more tasty? And you just go, it's, it's, it's just there, you know. It's yeah. the, it's I, I think, you know, um, it's all about money, Um and, and, you know, I did watch a, a, a television show in, in America where it's a typical working class family and it's cheaper for them to go to a fast food outlet and buy, the, you know, um, hamburgers for their kids than it is to actually go to a supermarket and shop. And this is a real problem, you know. Scary stuff. Anyway, he says looking at <laughs> next to his cup of coffee here this morning. Henry, it's a pleasure chatting with you this morning. You and too, 
We're looking forward to the new show on Sunday. You're going to be here on Saturday night as well. That's 8 o'clock, 70s plus, and uh, the old flares come out then, don't they? That's right, they do, and the clogs as well. Don't forget the clogs. <laughs> we shan't. I shall get that orange shirt on as well. Uh, Henry, have a good weekend, and uh, looking forward to the show here. And don't forget, if you miss the show, you can always hear it again at voicefmradio.co.uk and also via Bondi Tunes. Uh, That's via correct, Netflix yes. As well. BondiTunes.com. Thank you so much, John. Thank you very much, Henry. Enjoy the weekend, and uh, hopefully we'll maybe Natter again next uh, Friday. I'd love to. I'd like to make this a weekly thing, actually. That'd be good. I can tell you what's going to come on to the chat show at the weekend, so that's a good idea. Big build-up for the show. We look forward to that. Thanks very much, Henry. Okay. And uh, just to remind you, that is uh, the Bondi chat show is going to be with us here at Voice FM Sunday, and that is here from 10 o'clock in the morning. Last cigarette before bed. More people die in house fires caused by cigarettes than anything else. Make sure you put it out. Right out. Fire kills.